The day began with prayers for the dead and the living. A memorial mass drew thousands of people jamming the plaza in front of Port-au-Prince's ruined Roman Catholic cathedral. Many came to give thanks, like Carmita Jeanville, whose children survived the quake. Mark Andre Grafton came to pray for his son, who did not. The service was attended by Haitian and foreign dignitaries, including Mirland Manigat, the leading vote getter in the first round of presidential elections held last month. I remember people, friends, relatives who died, and unknown people too. Later, crowds strolled past the ravaged presidential palace, where posters set up overnight depicted plans for rebuilding city districts. They show elegant apartment buildings set on broad boulevards with comfortably furnished interiors, including a flat screen TV. Haitians stared at the posters in astonishment. These visions of an idealized future stand in brutal contrast with the reality of Haiti today, one year after the earthquake. This festering tent city right across the street. The United Nations estimates 800,000 Haitians are still living in tent camps, although other international organizations believe the figure is much higher. Only a small percentage of rubble has been removed, and an ongoing cholera outbreak has claimed more than 3,000 lives. Many Haitians are frustrated by the lack of progress and disillusioned with the international community. Rob Reynolds, Al Jazeera, Port-au-Prince.